Okay, you ready for today? Today we're continuing our series on prayer, your life depends on it. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that every Christian has been asked by God to do, but very few ever do it. I would like to challenge you to evaluate your life to see if you're following the Lord in spiritual disciplines that he's asking from you. I want to talk to you today about a form of prayer that most Christians do not engage in, and if they did, their life would be better. Most Christians will have an excuse and a reason why they don't. Most don't know they should or have never been taught how. Today, I want to talk to you about the lost secret of meditation. I want to talk to you about how meditation should be part of your life, and it's a form of prayer. And if you would meditate in the Word of God, you will get great benefits. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of meditation. I'm going to talk to you today about the practice of meditation, and I'm going to teach you how to do it. I remember as a young Christian hearing a particular Bible verse being quoted from the book of Joshua, meditate in the word of God day and night. And then it, they would tell the benefits of it. And I remember one year listening on what they used to call, you could find them in museums now. They called them cassette tapes. And I was listening to a cassette tape of somebody preaching and they were talking about meditating. And I yelled out right there, how? How do you do it? Quit telling me to do it. Tell me how to do it. I would really like to know how you're supposed to do it. I understand it's important. But here's what I would like you to grasp and understand. We are moving into a season that is going to be rocky. It's going to be bumpy. It's going to be challenging. You are moving, and I'm trying to prepare you for this. You are moving into a season where there is hyperinflation coming. The things are getting more expensive. Things are going to be different. And so what are you going to do about it? Are you going to panic? Are you going to be full of fear? Or are you going to follow the, the spiritual disciplines that the Bible talks about, prayer, meditation, fasting, and use these as tools and weapons to gain in this time of trouble? You know what happens in a season of trouble? God still honors his word. He still blesses those who hold on to it. He still he, he backs it up. So I would like you to understand and to grasp more than anything else, your prayer life right now is more important than anything else that you have ever are doing in life. You are going to survive because of your prayer life. See, survival, your survival will be determined by your prayer life. Now listen to this. Your prayer life is only as strong as your faith. Your faith is only as strong as your trust in God. Your trust in God is only as strong as how well you know God. And how well your, your knowledge of God will be determined by how well you know the word of God. You need to know what God has said in order for you to be able to be encouraged, to be inspired and to be knowing, trusting, and to have confidence that God is working on your side. I shared with you a couple of weeks ago the different types of prayer during this series that I want to teach you on. And a couple of weeks ago, I taught you on number one and number two. And that is how to pray for yourself and how to pray for others. Today, I want to talk to you about how to meditate God's way. I want to talk to you about how meditation is a form of prayer. I want to help you understand that. And then in the weeks to come, I want to share with you how to pray the word of God. When I talk to you about how to pray the word of God, I'm going to teach you how to prophesy over yourself. I'm going to teach you how to form your future with the prophetic word of the living word of God. And then I want to share with you how important it is to pray in the spirit and the difference between praying in the spirit and being moved by the spirit and praying in the understanding. And then last of all, I want to teach you how to win over demonic spirits, how to win over the power of darkness. So these things are what's coming up in the, in the future. And today we're going to talk about meditation, but here's something that I read in an article just the other day concerning the pandemic. And I would like to read from my notes. 
With the ongoing pandemic, many people have been battling mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, stress, bitterness, and get this, and unforgiveness. Doctors say emotional health and physical health are tied together. However, new research shows people who dramatically can dramatically, people can dramatically improve their overall well-being by reading scripture. Research shows that people who are connected with a strong Christian community and deeply involved with God's word were more apt to overcome challenges in life. So how well do you know God is how well you know the word. The how well you know the word, the you're going to know God. The more that you know God, the more you're going to trust God. The more you're going to trust God, the stronger your faith is going to be. The stronger your faith is going to be, the stronger your prayer life is going to be. It goes back to prayer and knowing the word of God. So let's begin. And, and I, I don't have one location for you to open. I have a lot of Bible verses for you. You can text notes to the number that they put on the screen. You can find it through the QR code. You can find the scriptures that I'm, I'm going to be using. I'm going to use quite a bit. I want you to grasp and understand meditation. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says this, finally brethren whatever things are true, whatever things are noble whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things there is a command from the apostle Paul to the church of Philippi telling them You're supposed to meditate on these things. And he gives a list of things. Do you know what that list of things is? Good stuff. Healthy stuff. Well, the word meditate in the Greek, there are two Greek words that are translated by the English word meditate. The one that we just read right now in the book of Philippians means this. Think real close. It means this. To think about something in detail and logical manner. To think about, to reason about, to ponder, to 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 meditate means I am thinking about what's happening and I am reasoning it through. The second word in Greek language that's translated meditate is found in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. We'll get to that later in the, in the talk today. But it means to keep on giving serious consideration to something, to ponder, to let one's mind dwell on, to keep thinking about to fix one's attention on. True biblical meditation is not world meditation. World meditation is sit down, empty your mind, and just do nothing. True biblical meditation is fill your mind up, fill your heart up with God himself, his word, his promises, his faithfulness, and what he can and what he has done. True meditation is taking the word of God and pondering it and applying it to my life and see how it changed my life. Most people, most Christians meditate regularly, but they don't meditate God's way. They meditate the world's way, and it can be defined as worry. Worry is nothing but meditating on what is going to go wrong before it ever goes wrong. And you literally prophesied into your own life. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. You're going to find that meditation is a form of what is inside your heart. And what you embrace the most is what you are going to encounter in life. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says this. This is the Old Testament. I read to you from Philippians, the New Testament. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew originally. The New Testament written in Greek and Aramaic. Mostly Greek. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 it says this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. How often should you meditate? All day. There should be something inside your brain that connects you to the word of God and to the thinking of God all day long. You are living with God. And he should be part of your daily thought life. 
And he says that you, but shall meditate in day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. It doesn't say that God will make your way prosperous. It says you will make your way prosperous. When you meditate on the word of God, day and night, it says, then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. In other words, you want to win in life. You need to be thinking about God and what God wants to do in your life at this moment during this thing while you live through it. The Hebrew word for meditate found in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 means this. It's a verb, which means it's an action word. It means to growl, to groan, to sigh, to mutter, to speak again and again and again. And it is used to meditate and to ponder. When you understand from the Old Testament teaching on meditate and the New Testament teaching on meditate, what you end up with as a definition is something that you think and think and think and think and ponder and embrace and speak. You have to be able to say it. You have to be able to say it again and again and again and again, which means it's going to be the word of God. So when and what? I want to talk to you about this right now. When and what do you meditate? According to Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says this. Blessed is the man. Do you know what the word blessed means? Full of joy. Success. Blessed. Happy fulfilled. Let me ask you this question. Would you define your life right now as happy and fulfilled? Do you feel fulfilled in life? Do you feel happy in life? If you answer with, yes, I do, then you are blessed. If you're saying, no, I don't, then there's a blessing missing that you can have that you need to get. And here's what he says. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, we can't do it the world's way. We have to do it God's way nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scorpion. So he says, here's how you walk, stand, and sit. And it says here in the next verse, in verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Now, the word law is reference to the ways of God and how God does things, what God is doing. Do you remember when there was a campaign and people wore that little rubber bracelet and it basically stood for what would Jesus do? That was actually brilliant. That was from the Holy Spirit because that's a question that you should be doing all the time. What would Jesus do right now? How would Jesus respond to this right now? I should follow Jesus. But what do we do? We go through something terrible and we scream at people. We yell at people. We we get angry at people because that's our first thing that comes out of the depth of our heart is frustration, disappointment, and anger instead of hope, faith, trust. What is inside your heart is coming out of your mouth in the time of emergency. Whatever you do, all of a sudden when you are taken over by the world moment, what comes out of your mouth? So the first thing that comes out of your mouth is that you cuss at the world, you cuss at the situation, and you damn a bunch of stuff. Then my friend, that's really resident in your heart. The first thing that comes out of you is a response of anger. Then my friend you got some anger inside your heart that's got to get out. You're not going to succeed in 2022 with anger. You're going to succeed with faith. You're not going to succeed with fear. You're going to succeed with faith. So how do I redo that? You reprogram your mind and you enlarge your heart. I'll tell you in just a few moments. Now let's, let's continue on when and, and <coughs> when and what. Psalms 36 verse 6 says this. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. In other words, some of the last things that should happen in your head when you're going to sleep is thinking about the promises of God, the greatness of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. I told you, I do do this every single night. I have a MP3 player. It's, It's basically... A phone that I don't use. You know, a lot of people have some old phones laying around. So why not convert one into a music device? I got the Bible 
New King James on MP3, downloaded it onto the device. I have a little speaker, Bluetooth speaker, right next, it's on my nightstand, right next to my head. I turn it on, I put the, the, the timer for 30 minutes, and I've got that word for the first 30 minutes of me laying in bed reading. Right now, I have the book of Proverbs, and I have listened to the book of Proverbs for the last two months, every single night. Just listen to it, listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. Why? I want the word of God and God himself in my head, not some worry, fear, and demonic activity. I want to know what is God saying. I want to meditate on my bed on the night watches, just like it says, Psalm 77, verse 12. I will also meditate on your work and talk of your deeds. Part of meditation is sharing with other people the goodness of God and what God has done. Part of meditation is talking about the work of God, thinking about the work of God. Part of meditation is thinking the achievements of God in your life. You should be thanking God. Psalms 119 verse 15. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. Meditation is not emptying your brain. Meditation is filling your head with what would God want me to do in this situation? That's meditation. That's part of your daily meditation. Daily In Psalms 119, verse 97, oh, how I love your law, it is my meditation all day. So he now, the writer of Psalms 119 is declaring, I think about what you want in my life, and I think about it throughout the day. We're going to pause for a second right now. We're coming back to the word. I don't know if it's someone here in the house or somebody who's watching online right now, but somebody has... It could be more than one person. You have severe, severe heartburn. You get it regularly. You have difficult breathing because of it. Right now, the word of God is going into your body and healing you. And in the name of Jesus, heartburn, leave. Your difficult digesting food, be gone. You be well. Could be someone here, could be someone online. You just have this from the Lord. Now I'm going to go back to my word that I'm preaching. Is that okay? Be healed. Psalms 145 verse 5 says this. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. You realize, I'm, I'm going to make up a story right now. That's what I'm going to do. You are in your, you're working somewhere, and you realize the company's not doing so well. COVID has really hit it hard, and they have lost a lot of income, and they're scaling down. You're very, very concerned that you're going to lose your job. How many of you, in that scenario, one of the things that would come to your mind is Psalms 145, I will meditate on your glorious splendor. I will think about how big you are. Very few Christians. Very few. You know what they'll do? I got to find a new job. What if I lose my job? I could lose my job. Right there in a a short moment, they've lost their residence. They've lost the place. They they can't make their rent or make their mortgage payment. And they're really concerned they're going to be living in their car. That is not the glorious splendor of God. But that is a revealing of what's inside your heart. Pastor, you're making me feel bad. No, I'm hoping to slap you on the side of the face and wake you up. (laughs) To reality. You are supposed to be a student of the word of God and meditate the word of God. This sounds like a full-time job. No, it takes about 15 minutes at the most. We'll get there. Now I want to talk to you about the benefits of meditation. I have shortened my sermon at least in half because I cut out a whole bunch of uh, uh, verses I wanted to share, but you get the 
gist of what I'm trying to communicate here. Let's talk about the benefits. Psalms chapter 4, verse 4. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still, Selah. So you have an anger problem or you're upset at someone or you're having just an anger issue, not an anger problem necessary. You're just mad. Somebody really ticked you off and now you're angry. So what do you do? You know what most Christians do? They call up their group, their small group, their friends and tell them how angry they are, how they were hurt, how much that person disappointed them, how much that other person let them down. Do they do the word of God? Where the word of God says the way you handle anger is you lay down in your bed and you meditate in your heart the goodness of God, the bigness of God, the forgiveness that you've already experienced and that you're supposed to share that with other people. Meditation will remove anger from you. Psalms 49, verse 3, my mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. According to Psalms 49, if I am a person who meditates, I will be smarter. I will have better wisdom and greater understanding. I will grow in the wisdom of God, which gives me the wisdom of life and gives me the ability to understand what I'm doing. I will be a person that's more functional in my call and my place of life. I will be an individual that can do my calling, my job, my place. I can be a better husband. I can be a better father. I can be a better grandfather by meditating God's word. It makes me a better person. It makes me forgive others. It makes me appreciate others. Psalm 64, verse one, hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Meditation is the best form or tool or weapon that you would, whatever term you want to use, against fear. If you will think about the bigness of God, the goodness of God in a time of fear, you will combat fear spiritually instead of just naturally. Some of you have trouble sleeping because fear overwhelms you at night. You turn to substance, whether that's over-the-counter things, prescription things, or things that you really shouldn't get dependent upon for the purpose of a good night's sleep. Where the Bible would like you to meditate on goodness of God. And it may not happen the first night. But if we get into a regular habit of thinking about the bigness of God, the goodness of God, the thinking of how good God is, what God has done, what God will do, our sleep will get better. Psalms 119, 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. Did you know when you hear about somebody who had a faith experience and an exalted God and you rehearse that in your head, that it does you good. This is why it's so important for you to tell us what God's doing in your life so we could share it with all of us. It encourages us. And it says here, I have more understanding. Understanding of what? Of you. When I hear more testimonies and when I share testimonies. I get it. You're big and you're detailed. In 1 Timothy, this is the New Testament, chapter 4, verse 13, it says this. Here's what Paul is telling Timothy. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Now, Timothy is a pastor. Paul is telling Timothy, until I come, make sure you give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that was in you, that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Meditate, meditate. Remember, think about, ponder, reason. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Timothy is told that if he meditates on his assignment of life, he will be better at it, which means it's true for us. 
If we will meditate on the things of God, if we will meditate on what God has done in our life, what God has called us to do, we will be better at what we're supposed to do. Meditation makes us better in the kingdom of God, makes us better in the call of God, makes us better in our role in life. It is important that we meditate the word of God and there's simple, okay, here's the things that you should be meditating. How big God is, how wonderful God is, and the promises of God. If you meditate on the promises of God and then you apply them to your own life, they become yours. Listen to this. This one is a shocker. Nobody even reads this verse. No one got this on their refrigerator. No one realizes what it's saying. But one day, one day, this is going to be exposed about you in front of Jesus. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Most people know Malachi chapter 3 deals with tithing where God got mad at people who were not giving their tithe or all their tithe. And he said, I want you to bring all your tithe into the storehouse. Not part of it or none of it, all of it. And God got mad and he challenged them. But then God wraps up that entire talk with this. Those who fear the Lord spoke to one another after they were chastised about not tithing. And the Lord listened and heard them. Those who fear the Lord sat in a small group, talked about what they just learned from God. And listen to this. God listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him, before God. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. God keeps a heavenly record for every single time you've meditated. Is your ledger empty? Or is he adding paper to it? Did he have to get a larger hard drive to store your record? Where are you One day you are going to stand in front of God and he's going to open the books. Look it up. You will be in front of the throne of Jesus Christ and you will be judged for every word that's come out of your mouth. You will be judged for gold, silver, precious stone that you you, um, did in the name of Jesus with hay stubble. One of the books that will be open is called the book of life. It's the first book that will be open. And the Lord will open up the book of life and see your name in it because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your your name wasn't blotted out of that book. Then he will open up the other books. And one of the books that he opens that is found is the book of remembrance. Have you remembered the faithfulness of God? And he records it. The other book that is open, and I'm sorry, but there's a book on tithing. And it will open. The book will open and you will stand in eternity in front of God and he will record and show you all your tithe. Another one is the book of meditation. He is going to open a book and he's going to repeat to you every single moment, time of day, at the time it happened with a time stamp of you meditating, you thinking about him. You applying his greatness in time of trouble. You applying what he's done. And you may sit there and say, oh, pastor, I don't think that's true. That's your problem. You think that you think better than God. It is my job to tell you reality. This is in the book. This is in the Bible. And the Bible says that God is going to account, have you account for your meditation. Why? Why is meditation so important? Meditation drives fear out of your life. Meditation increases faith inside your heart. Meditation causes you to be bold in life. Meditation is what gives you the memory, the remembrance, and spiritual victory over combating demons, over combating fear, over combating the evil of this world. You will not win over evil without meditation. So how do you meditate? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you right now. 
According to, it's, it's a matter of your heart. Listen real close. The definition of meditation, the definition of the Greek word and the Hebrew word have to do with thinking, but meditation is actually done in the heart. Let me show you. It's a matter of the heart. Psalms 4 verse 4 says this, be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Psalms 19 verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, so Lord my strength and my redeemer. Psalms 49 verse 3 says, my mouth shall speak wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. One more, Psalm 77 verse 6, I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart and my spirit makes diligent search. Remember, the word meditate means to think about something in a detailed and logical manner. To think about, to reason about, to ponder. Now, here's what you need to know. In meditation, meditation is something that you think about, but your heart embraces There are a lot of components to every living thing. For an example, your body has several systems. It has a nervous system. It has a digestive system. It has different systems. Those systems have different components. You have five major components, five major ones. There's a whole bunch of other ones inside there. But you have five major components. You have a spirit. You have a heart. You have a soul. You have a mind. And you have a body. Those are the five major components. Now, inside each one of those components, are, you could break it down all the way to the atom, you know, to that, the neutrons and the protons, if you wanted to do it in that thinking, that style, that way. But I want to talk to you about you as a born-again Christian have five major components. You have the spirit, you have the heart, you have the soul, you have the mind, and you have the body. What happens is in meditation, you are supposed to, according to Romans, renew your mind daily on the word of God. Your mind is supposed to think about God's word. Your mind is to be filled up with the word of God. You should collect information in your mind, but it is your heart that embraces it. It's your heart that empowers it. It's your heart that gives it trust. And your heart needs to be enlarged, and you enlarge your heart by, through meditation of what you trust. Lots of people know the word of God, but don't trust the word of God. Lots of people know who God is, but they don't trust God. Lots of people have God in their mind, but not God in their heart. And what I mean by that is your heart loves, your heart likes, your heart trusts, your heart embraces. When you give God your heart, what you are saying is, I am emotionally attached to that promise. I'm emotionally attached to your goodness. I am connected to it. Meditation is taking what you have learned, what you know from your brain, from your mind, and and planning it on your heart, writing it on the tablet of your heart. It It is putting it in your heart to the place that it becomes part of you, and you know if it is during an emergency what comes out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth? When something goes wrong, what comes out of your mouth? When you're in a you're in a tight situation, pressure's on, life's coming around, you you know, you're at work and you just got laid off. You something goes wrong. You go out to go to work, and you know how you know Americans go to work. They set the alarm just in enough time for them to get clothes on, throw some some kind of substance that will awaken them down their throat. Could be a Red Bull, could be a coffee, could be something else. Get in the car, start driving. This is pre-COVID. Start start driving to work, doing makeup on in the work, or, or shaving in the car while they're driving. If anything, you know, goes... They're, they've messed up their system. So you, you, you got up, you threw your Red Bull down or your coffee or whatever it might be, and you go outside into your car, you get in your car, you start to drive away, and you got a flat tire. What comes out of your mouth? You actually damn your car? 
I mean, that is like the stupidest thing. You own that car. You get out of the car and you go, God damn you, car. Why would you do that? Think about it. God, make it worse. (laughs) Where's your reasoning? How about God bless this car? Bless my tire. Bless the AAA guy coming really fast. What is coming out of your mouth? That is the meditation of your heart. So let me tell you four things how to meditate. Number one. Number one. It begins with the mind. I accidentally closed my document. I have to turn it back on so I make sure I say it properly. So what do we have up here? It begins with the mind, with your thoughts. I said meditation begins with you thinking. Number two, you embrace your thoughts in your heart. You need to take those thoughts. You need to, your reasoning, your reason is God is greater than my financial problem. God is greater than my health issue. God is greater than what I'm going through. God, and then you start quoting Bible verses inside your head. And those Bible verses inside your head start to put hope. Hope is not in your mind. It's inside your heart. It's not located in your mind. Your mind doesn't hope. It just stores information. But your heart determines and decides, is this hopeful? Is this true? Your mind, your heart will embrace its own truth, make its own truth. Have you ever had a friend who dates the wrong kind of person? They date abusive people. Have you ever had someone like that? Do you, or you know someone like that? They always pick the wrong one. Why? Logic says, this guy's a bum. Dump him. But the heart says, I love him. Oh, and the heart rules reason. This is why you have to enlarge your heart with meditation so that your heart is in agreement with God's word. So you embrace those thoughts inside your heart. Number three, you let your heart enlarge your agreement with the thoughts. In other words, you need to take the word of God and the promises of God and fall in love with them. The more, listen close, the more emotionally you are attached to the promise, the easier it is for you to believe it. By his stripes you are healed. My God shall meet all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. If you meditate in the word of God day and night, you will make your way prosperous and have good success. You take these promises and you emotionally, on purpose, declare them to be truth. Say them out of your mouth. This is what meditation is in the Old Testament is repeating it again and again and again and again and again and again. I, for 25 years, said every day, three times a day, wisdom, you are my sister, understanding you are my kinswoman. It's a promise from the Old Testament that wisdom and understanding would be my relative, a close relative. I would have wisdom. I would have understanding. I would get things. I would know what to do in troubled times. I'm the guy you want in an emergency because I'm cool-headed and I'll think real fast because I pray for hours in tongues and I've quoted the word of God to be full of wisdom. And I've said it again and again and again and again and again. I declare the promises of God over my life over my kids, and I remind my kids every time something goes good at work, they get a promotion. I said, it's because your dad is a tither. And you're living the blessings of another generation. Number four, you speak what you believe. You speak what you believe. You speak what you believe. Okay, I'm going to give you real quick. I'm going to take the time. I don't care what time it is right now. I'm going to change your life with the next three minutes show you how to meditate. I'm going to show you how to meditate. Do you got a chair back there? No chair? Okay. Could I have that chair, please? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to meditate. Thank you. 
get somewhere alone, okay? Sit in a chair. Lay on the couch. Go on your bed. Sit up on your bed, but be alone. And what I'm going to tell you at the most, at the most, it's 12 to 15 minutes. Do you have 12 to 15 minutes to change your life? We're not talking hours here. We're talking minutes. It will change your life. But you just got to do it all the time. You get, in, you get in a room, get in a chair, get someplace comfortable, and close your eyes. Okay? I'm, I'm just going to teach you biblical meditation. This is not some Eastern religion. This is biblical meditation. I want you just to get someplace, close your eyes, and just do a couple of breaths to exalt, ex- exhale your anxiety. You say, well, that sounds awfully. They do it before they throw the basketball on a free throw. They exhale. Every professional golfer will exhale right before he hits the ball. Watch them. They're about to putt, and that putt is going to be worth like a million dollars. You're going to see the person right before they execute the stroke. It's just part of human life, all right? We're just going to relax, exhale, inhale, just a couple of times. Get, get anxiety out. Now I'm going to ask you to do something. With your eyes closed in that room, pretend. Use your imagination. Use your imagination. With your eyes closed, pretend Jesus walked in the room. Jesus himself. So, well, Pastor, I can't do that. Then you need to do some more reading because Jesus loves you that much. Pretend Jesus comes into the room and he either sits right next to you or he sits right in front of you and he's relaxed. And he's just sitting there thinking, and it's all he's doing is saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm here for you. While you have your eyes closed and you know the presence, as soon as you have Jesus walk in the room, I'm going to tell you this. The room atmosphere changes. It just changes. <sighs> Anxiety leaves. Stuff goes away. Now, you've come to this time of meditation because something's already going on in your life. And you already should have three or four Bible verses that are important to you for this moment. Think of those Bible verses at that moment. Just quote him. Just say him in your head. Just say him in your head. Just say him in your head. By his stripes, I am healed. He took my infirmities and carried my diseases. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Forget not all his benefits, who heals all your diseases, forgives all your iniquity. You start thinking of scripture. Just three or four, that's all. Just think about them. And then purposely trust it. I trust your word, Jesus. I trust your promises. I trust what you've said. Just get relaxed. And then at the end of that moment, just do a little thanksgiving. I thank you for being so good to me. I thank you for being so good as our God Savior, my Heavenly Father, my King. Thank you. Breathe a couple more times and you're done. You will leave that room refreshed. You will be calm on the inside. Now, you could leave that room and you can go into the other room and the kids didn't do anything you asked them to do and lose your whole salvation. You know, kind of thing. But... If you practice meditation, if you will make it a part of your life, anywhere, it's going to be seven minutes on the short side, 14 minutes on the long side. But if it becomes part of your life, then you, this is your personal meditation time. Now you go into life and you meditate on his promises day and night. In other words, there's something going on in your life and you've got your little three by five cards or you've got it on your phone. I, I keep a list of scriptures on my phone and I open them up and I read them to remind myself who God is and he's in control. And you start taking all of life 
with him and you are living a life of prayer through meditation, you're praying without ceasing. Okay, did you learn something? Okay, can we thank the Lord for it? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, um, I, I, I don't want to stop without giving opportunity for someone to say yes to Jesus Christ. You know, we've had already people have committed their heart this month to Jesus. And we are just rejoicing that we are effectively changing, getting people out of hell and into heaven. If you're at home, if you're here in the house, I'd like you to just take a moment. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, you've never asked him to come into your life, This is the moment to do it. So I'm going to ask everybody to bow their head, close their eyes. And if you've not asked Jesus, you can say something very, very simple like, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, save me. Jesus, I need you. Whatever words you want to do to communicate your need for him, would you do that right now? So go ahead and lift your heads, open your eyes. I was going to say open your heads and lift your eyes. <laughs> that would be interesting. But if you have asked Jesus to come into your heart, or maybe you rebooted your life by saying, Jesus, I've kind of been doing my own thing and I need to follow you. Then what you can do right now is text the word, the two words, new life to the phone number on the screen. Text the words, new life, because we'll send you a link to give you more information on what your next couple of steps are, what to do after this, how to start your life with Jesus. It's very, very important that you do that. And I just want to remind everybody, God keeps a record, keeps a book for your meditation habits. So let's be people who actually do that, meditate the word of God day and night. Let's be doers of the word and not hearers only. It's not a mystical thing. It's not something difficult, but it is something you're just going to have promises in your mind. It's great to put them on paper or on your phone and look at them a couple times during the day. It takes two minutes at the most, 30 seconds most of the time, just to remind, oh yeah. Every time you pull your phone up and you look at your meditation scriptures, it's being recorded in heaven. That's pretty cool. 